Jimmy, let's take a look and see what Stan Lee can accomplish without the aid of Jack the King Kirby. <laughs> Welcome to your favorite YouTube channel, Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Ed Piscor. I'm Jim Rugg. Ravage 2099, Issue 1, Under the Microscope Today. We are a daily YouTube channel, Kayfabers, and uh, we have more than 1,600 videos at your disposal. So go to the front page of the Cartoonist Kayfabe YouTube channel, type in your favorite uh, comic titles, Spider-Man 2099, for instance, and uh, you could check out the episodes that we t where we talk about your favorite comics. The the channel is uh, brought to you in part by the Patreon, and uh, the top subscribers on the Patreon have access to all the videos before anybody else. Mitigates the kayfabe effect, which happens whenever we put a video out. These books become artificially very, very popular and very expensive on the aftermarket. It's the uh, biggest supporters who get the videos early and can buy the cheapest copies of the comics we're showing off and talking about on the aftermarket. Jimmy, without further ado, can we jump into uh, Ravage 2099, issue number one? Pretty ambitious looking cover. Looks kind of badass. Looks like maybe straight out of 2000 AD comics. I'm, I mostly like this cover. Reminds me a lot of like a Grimjack. Flint yeah. Henry comes to mind, speaking of 2000 AD. Yeah, I was thinking of, of a slain, of, of a strontium dog. It has a very European vibe. This should be right up my alley, but I do look at it with a uh, cartoonist eye and I think like, I don't want to draw a barbed wire belt or chains right. <laughs> everywhere. Like, not an easy costume, you know? It's not that thing that uh, I, I would learn as a kid of simplifying it if you're going to have to draw it a thousand times. Right. There's some challenges to making this look good, I think. Absolutely. And in fact, when we see how he builds his costume uh, in the issue, it's all, you know, found resources in a junkyard. So, like, you got to kind of, like, make it work that way. It'd be interesting cosplay to see if uh, somebody sources the same materials to uh, build their Ravage 2099 costume. I do love that, like, a little bit of the chest and the chest hair is out. Right. Because, I mean, you got a girl. got to got impress her. <laughs> got, got a big gun, brawny dude, got your game. Paul Ryan on the art duties. Uh, I, th I think he does a stand-up job. Paul Ryan, Paul Ryan was my house style marvel guy during my era i can see that he's the guy he did man he, did he do more issues of fantastic four than jack kirby yeah i was gonna like, say that's who i think of uh you know the book i associate him with but then before that he was on avengers like the issues with that rage character like he was on avengers when i was like a little dude uh so he's like that sure hand if, if you were an editor in comics and you had a, like a line of books you could give Paul Ryan the job and look elsewhere to other problem people and know that he's going to deliver. He's going to deliver to kind of like the best of his ability. He, he's, it's not going to shine. It's not like superstar artwork where there's some quirk to it that is going to make it extra noticeable. But he's so reliable. And I think he does a great job with the storytelling in this thing. I have no problems with his storytelling. One of the biggest problems I have uh, with the comic is when you see this on the cover, you know, it's, it's, it's Dave Mamet who says, like, uh, if you could cut something, do so, because the audience has beat you there already. When we see the first uh, glimpse of our guy with a suit with his ginger red hair pulled back in a ponytail, we know where it's going. Take us up to the minute. How fast can we get to that point? This video is brought to you by the comics that we make. Ed Piscor's Switchblade Shorties is now running as a daily comic strip on Instagram, Webtoons, Facebook, wherever you find your comics, look for Switchblade Shorties. Ed also has Hip Hop Family Tree, the omnibus, out in stores everywhere now, collecting all of the Hip Hop Family Tree strips, along with 150 extra pages, and uh, available in diminishing quantities. So pick that one up if you haven't added it to your shelf. The next Red Room Collection, Crypto Killers, is now out in stores, completely self-contained. So if you haven't read Red Room before, Crypto Killers, perfect place to start. And X-Men Grand Design, the trilogy trade paperback, collecting all of the X-Men Grand Design in one trade paperback volume. My Grand Design, Hulk Grand Design, is coming to the trade paperback format, and you can pre-order this one now, the Hulk Grand Design Treasury, out of print. So if your store still has a copy and you don't pick it up, 
but if you missed it, there's a trade paperback coming. I've been self-publishing lately, True Crime Funnies, my nonfiction collection, BW celebrating the black and white indie comics of the 80s and 90s, and the 1986 zine celebrating the greatest year in comics history are available at jimrug.com or patreon.com slash jimrug. And my latest books, Street Angel Princess of Poverty and Street Angel Deadliest Girl Alive, collecting all of my homeless ninja on a skateboard superhero comics in two handsome volumes from Image Comics. And now back to our video. Um, I don't know if... You know, don't want to bury the lead. This is Stan Lee coming back. Yeah. You know, like like one of the draws of this book at the time was Stan Lee writing a Marvel comic, again, creating a new character for Marvel. Right. So that's that's part of it. But yeah, it's like we, look, look at this composition. That's a fantastic composition, and there are going to be a dozen of them in this comic. Like, look at this panel. You know, Paul Ryan could do this on a monthly basis. This is an astounding artist for for what for what he's bringing to the table i'm with you i don't know that the coloring is helping this too much uh you know kind of kind of a, a generic coloring in a way i mean this is terrible and it that part makes me think of um i don't want to say 2000 ad because i'm it's not meant to insult them but there's a generic quality to this comic yeah that i i can't overstate you know even like a character like this it's it's just this is something I would see in like a laser tag ad here's or something. The, here's the other thing with, with Paul Ryan. Uh, I'm going to give him my established books. I'm not going to task him with inventing stuff because I don't think his imagination is in that place. I say that, but I look at that vehicle. I can never draw that. In five million years, I can never draw this craft. Yeah, you know, I don't even know if generic's quite the right word, but there does seem to be like a European sensibility. Like like there are little watchmanisms in this that yeah. make me think UK. Um even the detail of the backgrounds at a time in 1992 in some weird ways reminds me of, like, Euro comics. Look at the draftsmanship of this building. I mean, it's it's very, very strong drawing. Right. It has the peace sign on it. Uh, part of the, uh, the 2000 AD aspect to me is um, using sci-fi as a veiled statement on the, cur the current climate and stuff. And this is a, there's an environmental component to this comic. Could be Shooter if you replace the orange hair. If you color that a little bit differently, man, that could be Jim Shooter and the uh, the CEO there, the the, the uh, penthouse of Marvel Comics. It looks like Orion. <laughs> um, but, like, the second you see this guy, it's like... I think it's the, the way David Mamet describes drama is that uh, it b builds to a place that is um, surprising yet inevitable. There's no surprise... We know what's going to happen. So this is laid out wrong. This comic is laid out wrong. Like, show Ravage on page one in his gear and all that stuff, and then do some, like, backtracking or something like that, man. You know, remembering something. But he's, like, a CEO, an executive of some big old company. Al Alchemax. Yeah. That's why Alchemax put me in command. You know, he follows the rules. He does things by the book and he stops these polluters. Right. But it's Alchemax that's doing the polluting. So he's like the, the top guy at like a uh, at like a chemical company, no? Or like a... They're the police. Like they're the security force. That cool ship that was shooting that dude in the beginning, that's that's part of their group. And what's and, and so like this dude's a, the top guy of this company. Has no idea that bad things are happening. And their symbol is a peace symbol. Yeah. That seems stupid on Marvel's part. Like I'm making a new IP here. Hopefully it'll work and we'll be selling t-shirts and stuff. Well, you're not going to trademark the peace symbol. Right. And it's probably, you know, the, sa the same time period as uh, Give Me Liberty. And they certainly created some cool uh, iconography. Got the Heroes Quest... Uh, inserts there big fan <laughs> well i'm a big fan of the futuristic gangs we still do the the uh vests gotta have a, a vest or two in that gang i feel like we need you know the warriors or whatever their gang name is across the back it's as 80s as can be <laughs> that's the thing paul right like he's an interesting guy like i shared a i shared a car with him from the airport oh, yeah at uh eccc he's passed i don't know if you know that he's, oh i didn't yeah, know he's, that. he's not with us any longer um and I was just like, dude, yeah, I love your fucking run on. Uh, I would I would check back on Fant uh, Fantastic Four every now and then, and just like grab an issue. And, and Tom DeFalco was writer. 
and it was always serviceable. It was always decent, you know. It was always fine. Never mind blowing anything like that. But like I was like, yeah, dude, I you know would keep keep up with your work throughout my life. You you, you were the 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 Marvel guy to me. Um, and he's like, yeah, what what you doing out here? And I'm like, oh yeah, you know, my publisher's out here, so I got I'm doing a book with them, and we're doing a signing and some other events and stuff. He's like, who's your publisher? I'm like, Fantagraphics. And he's like, never heard of them. And I'm like, Comics Journal? Nah, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> so, like, this dude, punching a clock. Fantastic. Punching a clock. Hey, how do you feel about the inks on here? Because, like, some of this stuff I like, and it reminds me a little bit of Dan Green. It's Keith Williams. So, uh, but I kind of like it. It's a little bit rougher, I think, than maybe some of the stuff on Fantastic Four, for example. Yeah, maybe. Uh, it, you know, it still has those, like, Jim Lee-isms that I'm just not crazy about at all. Because this guy is just, he's... he's too good for that you know like it, it, the, the stuff he's pulling from is divorced from that so it's kind of like a weird tension a weird push pull it does feel like that was the mandate oh, late yeah. 92 it was like this is what you guys are drawing like now. totally totally and he fell victim to that i think he was drawing the phantom strip for a while in, in sort of his later years he didn't he didn't get to live to be very old by the way you see these crazy pinks man i think i think the color separators are some somebody fucked up with the color Boy, the ponytail big. Big in 92. <laughs> we have our AI porn chicks and stuff. By the way, this is 100%. This dude is going to go bang one of these AI things. Because he's like, I can't decide which of these holographic beauties to select for my virtual reality session. Yeah. Why he, are you telling this guy? Yeah, dude. Is he, he going to watch? He, the bros, man. He's handing him the fleshlight that he's going to like put on his jammy to kind of go in sync with her hip, hip motions. <laughs> it's pretty wild that that's in a comic aimed more or less at kids. Right. <laughs> but jeez, Louise, how much do we have to explain? So that's the big boss, and uh, the guy in charge of the security force shows up to explain how there's corruption in the security force. And the big guy's happy to get the answer to that, and then uh, he decides what he's going to... Got to, got to silence that dude. Right. Uh, the little gang dude, he, his, his purpose is to kind of get uh, Ravage. And by the way, Ravage's name is Ravage. His last name is Ravage. Yeah. So, uh, you know, what's in the name? You got to be a tough badass if that's going to be your name. You know what we should have pulled out, dude? The fucking Tim Tyler Ravage comic with a chainsaw hand and put it right next to it? Yes. A better Ravage yes. comic. Yes, <laughs> A thousand times better. And you know what? I think there's some, like, Jim Lee-isms in that as well because there's a period where some of his art has that, like, double lighting, cross-hatching kind of stuff. Right. I'm I'm kicking myself. Man. Yeah, me too. I just, it just came to mind right now, man. But uh, this kid got him thinking that, like, yeah, maybe, maybe, there, uh, maybe there is something. You, you got my ear, kid. I'm happy to hear you out. The kid, uh, his dad was killed by the security force. Yeah. You think that's a screen? <sighs> I don't think the inker's doing that. I think that's a screen. I bet you're right. I yeah. think that's It's very out. organic for a screen, you know? Yeah, like that's, yeah. Somebody no, hand those. drew that. Yeah, I have those. So his assistant overheard all of this, which means he's going to need a new assistant. Right. Blast that guy out. I was looking at the uh, the glass breaking, and it felt real plausible, like like the way some of that glass is still kind of like oriented the way it was when it was in the window and stuff. I think that's a smart move. But once again, these backgrounds, Paul Ryan is fucking dope. He's drawing a lot on these pages. You and know, it, it's a number one with Stan Lee's getting a push, so he's certainly doing his share. Yeah, I wonder so what cool. kind of story he had to work with, because the story is interminable. Oh, it's awful. Like, yeah. did Stan give a detailed script did somebody else write this in detail for paul ryan like what are you dealing with because it's not very fun to read no not at all uh the colorist like like ebbs and flows with the with the coloring because whenever they play with the windows sometimes the colorist is smart enough to use a lighter color when you see the stuff behind the window yeah. you know what i'm saying and it's this sort of an opportunity to do that but this guy's just you know paint by numbers go, going through the motions uh we see our girl from the cover she's she's like the uh the uh, secretary for the big boss and you know what this is actually like a quaint and charming kind of piece because you, you imagine stan lee with like flo steinberg and people he's like this is a far this is 2099 and he's telling his uh secretary to like hook them up with a with a direct line to so and so and uh and don't listen in right make sure you don't listen in and she's like yeah okay 
by the way, when Candyman came out, it's the only, my parents always put on those horror, like we could watch any horror movies, whatever, no problem. That's the one that gave me nightmares. That one effed me up. I do think that um, Paul Ryan foretold the 2022, 2023 chick LA mullets that the girls were like, think Miley Cyrus in the past couple of years that the uh, girls were doing. So that was good foresight on, on, on his part. And of course the girl is immediately listening in on uh, what's going on and realizes that, uh, guess what? The big boss guy, he's the bad dude. This page looks very joyless to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it all feels joyless. And, and I, I associate that, frankly, with, with Paul Ryan's work also, where he's so strong at, at what he does, but it's punching a clock. Like, I imagine that he works from nine to five, he, like, puts the pencil down and goes and enjoys, like, a nice kind of suburban life, watches Roseanne, and, like, doesn't think about it anymore until it's time to punch the clock the next day. This is bizarre. So they're bringing this thing called a mut Mutroid in. And cool submarine. Again, that submarine could be out of Watchmen. Straight up. And this is our Mutroid, like, coming in on a raft in front of it. I can't totally understand some of the, the reasoning how that works out. Is the submarine pushing the raft onto shore? <laughs> and if so, is it then going to be beached, uh, you know, next to it? But nevertheless, this is the... Could be doomsday. Great almost, build, walking, like, walking up, and, and 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 it's all Paul Ryan. It's all Paul Ryan's work, you know, like of, like the camera angles that he's choosing, and we cut back and forth, right? So we got Ravage still kicking it with this kid it, to the point where the kid's like, "Why you keep walking around with me?" Which, you know, that feels ham fisted. Yeah, the kid is like, "You're gonna. I'm probably dead now right. because you've exposed me to this." And Ravage has no clue. Yeah, yeah, he's a he's a big boob. Yeah, it takes a lot for him to get convinced, yeah. and and it really is, it's going to be this this gimp. It's going to do the trick. Once again, smart drawing here, because like this could have been an easy tangent to create if you just move him over a little bit. You got a you got a messed up drawing. Also, I feel like Tiana might be a secretary for both Ravage and the leader of this company. Yeah. She goes back and forth between the offices. What? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I, I, I thought that they're, they're in the same company. Like, like the, the other guy's top, top, top dog. And, and she should be like a secretary clone. It's 2099, <laughs> you know? Right, man. Uh, so here comes the Mutroid as he, uh, as he enters. Or a Troid, as like the, uh, the locals might, might call him. That's the epithet. See, I wasn't going to go uh, racial, <laughs> Jimmy. I wasn't going to go to an epithet, but you, but you took it there, man. And then uh, talk about just the lamest. It, it, it feels like when a little kid makes a story or, or something like that, uh, when the Mutroid starts talking and they sort of implant all the, all the cops and, and, and all the recording equipment in there, and the Mutroid is like, thank you so much for giving me this illegal, you know, blah, right. blah, blah, and for uh, conspiring with me also to do this blah, blah, blah. And... Ravage is like, what are you talking about, man? And eventually realizing that it's a setup, but like this bit right here is so corny. It's extra whack. Yeah, this is this and is And the fact that this tough. bit when it gets recorded is enough to convince the public, you know, hey Jimmy, thanks for giving me that dirty bomb yesterday. <laughs> I'm gonna put it to good use. You know what I mean? Like, you believe that? Yeah. It's tough. This dude decides it's a capital offense and shoots him, but Ravage ducks, so that's how he gets the cool scar on his eye. Got it. Got to uh, build the scar into. That's the how he gets the cool cable-like scar on his eye. <laughs> Ginger cable. Oh, why did they, talk about a blown opportunity? How is one of these characters not cable? Right. Twenty ninety nine. <laughs> totally, man. Dispatches this guy. So so now he has he's competent. Not only is he a business maven, but he can also uh, wield them things, man. He could throw hands. Yeah. <laughs> he got little bombs in the shape of footballs. Jumps the old lady out of the, the damn building, a la Watchmen. And then the explosion happens. And what's real funny, too, is the dialogue. Because, like, if you're working Marvel Method, then Stanley only, you know, he's got to worry about the dialogue. So he's choosing the words. So uh, we see the camera angle from the video, right? 
Too bad the smoke is obscuring the sight of their mangled bodies. Let's say there's no smoke. We're going to see mangled bodies uh, from from that view. It's a, it's a it's a it's a dumb piece of dialogue. And what he's what it's to illustrate is how how awful and bad the guy is. But you couldn't come up with anything else. I wonder what Stan Lee thinks if he is involved in this comic compared to when he's writing dialogue for like Jack Kirby and there's sort of like almost music of characters bouncing around off of each other. Like if he's doing Marvel method, imagine trying to dialogue this in anything except exposition. Right. And we see Ravage framed with a bunch of smoke as he's holding on to uh, the building. Guess what? They didn't die. Once again, surprising and inevitable or just inevitable. And then there's the convenient thing of like breaking into a window, which you imagine is just below him. And guess what? It turns out to be uh, what the office, of your, the, the, the little apartment where your homeboy lives. <laughs> is that really what he breaks into? I think, he, no, dude, it's minutes late. Minutes later. Oh, okay. Like clearly this apartment's, I don't know, 400 meters away, like <laughs> okay. a minute or That's two. Fair. That's fair. <laughs> Here's your Shades of Ronin right here, dude, where you have uh, the sort of urban dwellers, but then you have the big green monolithic bioorganism kind of invading. Right. Though that's not exactly what's up, what's happening there. See, this is one of those faces where if we were playing the game, Jimmy, you could trick me into thinking that it's uh, John Buscema inked by like a hack. Right. Yep. And it's the nose. It's it's the way the eyes are. Some of the hair, too. Like yeah. Some of the, the hair. I, I, I like this, uh, the kid. Hey, answer the lady, Paul Phillip. Paul Phillip? He's, he's dead. dead. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then he even changes his... Um, speech yes. syntax when yes. he becomes a badass man you know he's a ceo he's he's he's, he's got a uh he went to wharton business school and shit <laughs> but when he becomes ain't no one here but ravage see he's cosplaying <laughs> and we're going to get a page how about this shit right right here what do you think about this man like uh, two of the same ad the double ad jeez wonder what fleet fleet ultra thought of that and i wonder if Marvel had bought Fleet at that point. Wait, who did, what company did they buy? They Fleer. bought Fleer. Yeah, and this is Fleer. Oh, yeah, yeah, Fleer Ultra. Yeah, so that's their deal. At first I was like, is that Iron Hood, Ironhead Hayward? Uh, so we got our obligatory Canon Films page where he's building his costume out of, like, like a, a Ford hubcap. Is that Ford? The Ford logo, Jimmy? Right? Chevy. Chevy. Chevy hubcap. Chevy, a Chevy hubcap. <laughs> Yeah, jeez, I didn't even notice that. Chains, barbed wire, and a bunch of uh, nondescript gears. <laughs> gears. And a lead pipe. He feels like he died and been reborn. <laughs> and, uh, dude, straight out of, uh, you know, Slain the Barbarian or any one of those Strontium Dog type comics. Well, listen, man, it only took 29 pages, <laughs> but here we are. Hot wires a super old school car, Mack truck, barrels through a gate. It's a garbage truck, right? That's is, is that it's a garbage right? truck. Ah, <laughs> Hot wires. It's Ravage, dude. Of course, of course his vehicle is a garbage truck. And then uh, we have to take it fully to Captain Planet and the Planeteers and give an epilogue because, like, we've established a lot. We have we have a, the the dame, we have the protagonist. We have the Jimmy Olsen, who's that little gang kid. You know, we have the bad CEO Lex Luthor guy. And now we have to take it to Captain Planet and Planeteers, where we have some greater, like, eco-villain who's super stoked on, like, polluting the Earth, named De uh, named Deathstrike, which, which is great because it's like, you know, Stan Lee doesn't read Marvel comics and doesn't know that there's already <laughs> Deathstrikes and stuff. And Marvel, so, you know, got to spell it a little bit differently. Um, and, there, and yeah, there you have it. You know, if Ravage 2099 takes off, this will be uh, the Wave 1 action figure. This, this person has had a vision of one who died only to be reborn. <laughs> Two pages ago. I feel like I've died and been reborn. <laughs> <laughs> Great stuff. Oh, this so is... Um, Comics are about to plummet, right? Straight up. This is this is the end of 1992, and things are, are going to be going south in terms of comic sales. And honestly, I, I don't understand why you do a comic like this. I mean, I, I, I just... 
you've promoted this. Right. You know, like a lot of comics come out with no promotional money or effort behind them. You promoted this. People are going to pick up this book and go, I'm never reading a comic again. <laughs> this is the uh, era of uh, all sizzle, no steak. And uh, it's cared about so little by the creative team and uh, Stanley in particular. Next month, if we can convince our leader to say a few words, I'll shut up. Yay. And we can hear from him on this page. Literally, Stan Lee can't even be bothered to, like, write something for this. I, I, don't, I don't know what to say. I'm, I'm surprised by this comic. We've got to get that shoot interview with Joey Cavalieri, man. Like, like, like right under Mark Chiarello in terms of, like, bringing, like, cool shit to uh, comics. Joey Cavalieri um, edited, like, some Pete Bag. DC yep. Comics, and uh, he might be the bizarre, he the is, bizarre yeah, yeah. comics guy. So he's got he's like one under Cavalieri with doing cool shit. He must have been biting the tongue out of his mouth, fucking editing this shit. Because because what is he going to say to Stan Lee? He's going to tell Stan Lee that like you know you've been redundant with your phraseology on these two pages. He's going to shut his mouth, let fucking the guy who you know built the house and shit just do whatever. I, it's just a really bad comic. <laughs> I, you know, I don't know what else to say about it. I thought Spider-Man 2099 issue one wasn't very good. And, you know, maybe it's the issue ones are just a challenge. And really, if you look at Marvel and DC, they're built on all the other issues. You know, I was, uh, I was looking at, cause like I have other 2099s pulled. If this is big, we're doing another, uh, the Punisher 2099 with all the stuff we've been talking about, British, this British, that 2000 AD. It's written by Pat Mills. Have you read it? I haven't. But with that character, with that kind of setting, with his experience with, like, nihilistic, gun-toting right. fucking characters, that might be a good comic. It might be. Let's yeah. hope. Pat, I think Pat, Pat Broderick on the, on the art to kind of soften it up and make it a little less cool. Are you but... sure? I thought Pat Broderick did the Doom 2099. Oh, he might have. Yeah, you know, oh no, you know what, you're right, you're right, it was Flint Henry who did the art on that, it was just pretty dope. Oh, that's a good, that feels like a good creative team. Yeah. Um, we've talked about Ghost Rider 2099, I have a soft winner. spot. That might be the winner. Um, the one I've never seen, one issue of, and maybe I'm even making it up now I'm thinking about, was there a Hulk 2099? There was. It must or, or later. It might have been like 2099 Unlimited, one of those kind of things. Okay. Um, I want to say that was Dwayne Turner, but... Maybe just a cover or something. Kind of cool. There, there's a small appearance of Hulk 2099 in Hulk Grant Design. It was a cool look, but I don't know about the story. And there is, uh, there is X-Men, which uh, I can't even... I have it, but I can't really recall creative teams or anything. Yeah, this, this, this is one of those books where I don't feel good at the end of it. <laughs> <laughs> totally bad. Good to go? Yes. Kayfabers, like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit the bell so that we can notify you when new videos are available, and we are en route to having 100,000 subscribers. It would mean a lot if you subscribe to, uh, to the vids and, and, and get us up to that goal. Uh, the channel is brought to you by many things, uh, including the Patreon. King Kayfabers on the Patreon get access to all of our videos before anybody else. They're hanging out with us in a live stream recording chat room uh, right now as we uh, make these episodes. And because they get everything before anybody else, they're able to buy the comics uh, that we talk about before anybody else in Gen Pop gets uh, access to uh, these vids and these comics. Ultimately, the videos are brought to you by the books that we make. You don't buy our books, we can't make any videos. Jimmy, let the people know what you have out in stores now. I've been self-publishing lately, so I have True Crime Funnies, my nonfiction anthology featuring crime and wrestling. I've also been making zines, the BW zine celebrating the 80s and 90s self-publishing in indie comics, the 1986 zine celebrating the greatest year in comics history. These are available at jimrug.com or patreon.com slash jimrug. My grand design, Hulk grand design, is available as a treasury edition, but this is sold out. So if your store doesn't have a copy, you're probably out of luck. But there is a trade paperback coming in May that you can pre-order now, the Hulk Grand Design trade paperback. And my latest releases, Street Angel Princess of Poverty and Street Angel Deadliest Girl Alive, featuring the homeless ninja on a skateboard from Image Comics. You can get these wherever books are bought and sold and uh, perfect for the superhero fan in your life. The Switchblade Shorties comic strip is coming to you on a daily basis. I have an, a directory, an archive uh, at Webtoon for Switchblade Shorties. But if you're on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, 
Uh, you'll be able to uh, get your hands on all of the uh, comics on a daily basis. Uh, the Hip Hop Family Tree Omnibus is out in the wild right now in very, very limited supply. Uh, 150 pages of material that is new uh, specifically for this book. So uh, it's the ultimate uh, volume of Hip Hop Family Tree. Get it while supplies last. Thank you very much for supporting it the way you have been. Red Room Crypto Killers is the new round of Red Room Comics that is out. What happened? I was going to flip through it, and then I remembered, YouTube doesn't like us flipping through this book, Ed. <laughs> right, man. Uh, it is the new uh, round of Red Room Comics, Murder on the Dark Web for Fun and Profit. Think Black Mirror meets EC Comics, in, in a way. Four stories in there. Uh, you, you can start with this comic, or you can start with any of them, because all stories are uh, self-contained in each volume. And finally, the X-Men Grand Design Trilogy trade paperback is out there in the wild, collecting all of my X-Men Grand Design works. Some of those volumes are out of print. So uh, it's your way to get all of my X-Men Grand Design in one handy-dandy uh, soft cover edition. Like I said up front, you got to buy the books in order for us to kind of keep the lights on in the studio. YouTube don't pay nothing. Uh, but there are some ways to directly support the Cartoonist Kayfabe channel. Jimmy, let the people know what those are. You can subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe e-newsletter at the links below this video. You can also buy Cartoonist Kayfabe t-shirts, merchandise, mugs, hats, stickers, and more at our spread shop. That link is also under this video. All good ways to uh, support the channel. Give them those final marching orders, Jimmy, and we'll be on our way. Read more comics.